Good afternoon and welcome to Carnegie Meadows Farm. Uh, I'm Tom, or Thomas. Today we're going to be making uh, farmhouse cheddar. A lot of uh, the methods that we'll use is, is from this book. I uh, highly recommend it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add our water to our double boiler and we're going to add our milk. And our milk is uh, raw and so a lot of times uh, our milk will be uh, separated into its cream layer and so we just usually give her a good shake just to, to mix it all back up as we add it in. So we get a big cream layer that's around the outside surface of our pot and we want all that good cream because that helps to make more curd for us. We've got our milk into our pot and we've got our water and so I'm going to put it on very low heat. We've got a gas or a propane stove and so we don't want a lot of heat. So I've got a, a burner here that has a um, kind of like a simmer and a low uh, setting. So I'm using that. So very low heat, just providing um, enough to raise this the temperature of the milk very slowly. We used about uh, 12 liters of milk. Uh, it's the size of the pot that I have. There are other recipes where you can make smaller batches, but we get uh, about 12 liters of milk a day now. So I'm making full batches. The recipe that I'm following uses uh, 12 to 15 liters of milk and you should be getting on average about a kilogram of cheese from that. Our cow has a very high cream content and so we're, we're getting cheeses that are almost uh, 1.7 kilograms. So we're getting high yield out of our milk. So it's important to use good quality milk if you can find it. Um, but if you're, if you're using it uh, from the store, you can still get a nice product. Um, you just have to make uh, some adjustments to the recipe that you use. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to warm this up slowly. We're going to stir it. When you're making cheese, you don't want to be creating a big vortex and uh, um, you know mixing very vigorously. It's very slow, methodical, and uh, you're gentle with the milk and the curd. You get all of the cream worked back into the milk as it's been uh, being brought up to temperature. And so we'll just continue to do this until we reach... 86 Fahrenheit, which is going to take some time, um, you know, especially since you're going to be doing it low and slow, you know, upwards of 30 minutes to 45 minutes before this is uh, actually ready. 84.2. We've reached uh, 86 Fahrenheit, uh, so that we're going to turn off our temperature, our stove, and I usually like to take uh, thermometer out at this point just so it doesn't get in get in the way and so the first step that we're gonna do now is add our culture each of your recipes will call for something different there's multiple different cultures that you can use to make cheddar um, so we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of culture and basically what we want to do is just make it uh, or add it so that it sits on the top of the uh, surface of the milk and you don't want to uh, kind of overload certain areas, try to distribute it as evenly as possible. Now what we're going to do is we're going to allow the culture to dissolve on the surface of the milk uh, for about 10 minutes or so. Usually it says several minutes or a couple of minutes. I usually just set it for 10 minutes and then I allow it to dissolve into the milk. So now that our culture has dissolved in the top of the milk, we're going to uh, stir it completely into the milk. So we're not going to create a big vortex. What we want to do is up and down motions. So reach to the bottom, bring the surface of the, or bring the milk to the surface. And so we'll do that 20 times, uh, 20 up and down strokes. And at that point, we will set the timer for 45 minutes and allow this milk um, and the culture to ripen. It's been 45 minutes. Our uh, culture has had to uh, ripen in the milk. And so the next step is uh, we're gonna add uh, some calcium chloride. For those for, that have raw milk, this is not a required step. Uh, it does add a little bit of consistency to your cheese throughout the, uh, throughout the year. Um, however, for those that are using homogenized and uh, uh, pasteurized milk, uh, it is a requirement to add the calcium chloride. Um, the cheesemaker's manual that I've got from uh, Margaret Peters again will go through kind of a lot of these different ingredients and when they're required, um, when they're not required. In order to add our calcium chloride, what we'll need is a quarter cup of cold water or cool water and we'll mix that together with the calcium chloride. 
So what we're uh, adding is three quarters of a teaspoon of calcium chloride. And so similar to the, uh, when we added the culture, uh, 20 up and downs. So we'll just add the calcium chloride slowly and then we'll just mix it uh, into the milk with uh, 20 up and down motions. So we'll let that sit for about five minutes. While we're waiting for the calcium chloride to sit for about five minutes, uh, what we're gonna do is get our uh, rennet ready. And so similar to the calcium chloride, we'll need a quarter cup of uh, water, cool water again. And then we're gonna mix the rennet directly into uh, the water. We're going to add our uh, liquid rennet. And so we're gonna add it to the quarter uh, cup of water we've got uh, three quarters of a teaspoon, similar to the calcium chloride. And we'll mix it all into the, the water before we add it to our, our milk. And so the numbers that we're quoting for all of this is for 12 to 15 liters of milk. And so depending upon the size of your recipe, you may need to adjust the amounts that you're using. So similar to the calcium chloride, we'll add the rennet to our uh, milk at, with 20 up and down stirring motions and then following this um, we'll allow the milk to coagulate and, and uh, we'll allow that for 45 minutes. And I've made this uh, recipe a few times uh, generally it's 30 to 45 minutes um, at which time you'll check for what's called the clean break um, but I generally just leave for this recipe for 45 minutes and I know that this milk will be coagulated by that point. So we'll put the lid back on. So it's been 45 minutes, our milk is uh, hopefully coagulated. And now what we'll do is we'll check for a clean break. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a knife. I just grabbed a regular knife, you can use whatever you got. And you're just gonna make a cut and then you're gonna try to fold the layer and see if if it's clean and if you got bits and pieces stuck to your knife or if it's not uh, staying together almost like a jello then you know you haven't let your milk um, coagulate long enough so in this case we've got uh, we've got our clean break and so at this point what we do is we cut the curd what we want is you know a uniform uh, bit of curd after we cut it and so I use uh, this tool um, you can use a whisk as well. And so what we're doing is you're just looking to cut the curd into like half inch kind of chunks. Make sure you get down below too. Um, we've got quite creamy milk so our curd is very thick and so it'll take you a little bit to get through but do it gently. You don't want to be too forceful at this stage because the curd is still um, not very firm. And then after you finish cutting your curd, you're gonna let it sit for five minutes before we start heating it. So again, make sure you get all the curd because you want them into a uniform uh, consistency. That's pretty good. We're gonna to continue to stir as we heat, um, but at this point, we'll let it sit for five minutes. We'll put our thermometer back in because we're going to use it at the next stage. Our curd has sat for five minutes and it will sink down to the bottom of the pot. And you'll already start to see a bit of whey uh, separated from the curd. And so at this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to set our stove on to low uh, because anytime we are heating any, any of the milk, it's done on a low setting. And you'll have to figure it out for your own particular stove. Um, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to heat the curd uh, up for approximately 40 minutes and I say approximately because it'll take you a little bit to, to 
to get it right with your stove. And so we're going to bring it from uh, its current temperature, which is roughly around 83 degrees Fahrenheit. So it dropped a little bit from the 86 that we started with, but we're aiming for 102 uh, Fahrenheit as the final temperature. Okay, and so I switched to the whisk uh, for this stage and I just twist and I bring the curd up. And you wanna make sure that you're getting all the curd. You don't wanna leave some at the bottom of the pot because it'll start to with the, uh, mat together and it'll heat differently than the rest of the curd. And you wanna bring some of that curd up as well. You're trying to get rid of pieces like that when you're stirring and make sure that the curd is not matting and you'll as you heat the uh, as you heat the curd up it will start to change consistency right now it's a it's pretty um, I don't know, it's pretty soft and it's not very firm so that's why you got to be very careful with it to begin with but as the uh, as it heats up and as the um, curd starts to shed a little bit more of the way you'll start to see that that curd will uh, firm up a bit and so you continue to stir this periodically. You don't have to stir for the full 40 minutes, but uh, every so once in a while, and the whole idea is just to start mixing everything together, stop the curd from matting and bring it uniformly up to 102 Fahrenheit. We're pretty well there uh, at 102.0 Fahrenheit. Um, took us a little longer to get through the um, the process because the element that I'm using, um, I've got two different burners on it. Uh, one is for more of low heat and simmer, which is what I use uh, because everything else on this stove uh, just puts out too much heat. So we're a little bit more than uh, the 40 minutes that were allocated for, for this stage. Um, I haven't seen that it's made too much of a difference so far in, in our cheese making, but if you've got an electric stove, you might be able to control the heat a little bit better than, than uh, the gas stove that I have. So we're going to shut this down now, and then uh, we're going to continue to stir for the next 30 minutes. Um, and that is, again, to prevent matting, but we're not going to have any heat to this. Uh, we'll just set the timer for 30 minutes, and then at that point, um, you know, the, the we'll, we'll do what's called the texture test uh, to check to see how firm the curd is. Okay, so again, we're at two, 102 Fahrenheit. Uh, we're gonna continue to stir for the next 30 minutes. Same kind of process, and we're looking for that curd to continue to uh, get smaller. Uh, more of that way is gonna escape the curd at this point, and, uh, and we'll check for its, the texture of the curd. You can also kind of start to feel it uh, when you're stirring the curd, that it is now a different texture than it was when we first started. All right, so we're about halfway through. One of the things that uh, as we're stirring, what we're looking for is, again, we're trying to break up all of the, the matting. And so you're starting to see some of the curd matting together there. And you want to make sure you continue to break that up so that uh, you don't have a pocket of curd. And, and they're very sneaky, this curd. They'll hide, you know, in between your thermometer and they'll hide at the bottom of the pot. So you got to make sure you continue to bring it up. The other thing to be mindful of is for this 30 minute period, you want to make sure that your um, curd remains at the same as best you can, the temperature. So if, depending upon your setup, um, you may need to add a little bit of residual heat in order to keep the curd at a constant temperature of 102 Fahrenheit. It's been 30 minutes. We've been stirring it periodically throughout the time. Uh, now what we want to do is we uh, I want to do what's called a texture test. Um, I've gotten to the point where I can feel uh, the, the cheese itself and know when it's ready. But to do the texture test, you want to basically take some of the curd in your hand and you want to squish it together. And then if it's holding like it is right now, then you know you've got the right texture. If it's breaking apart, so if your texture test kind of looks something like that and it's not staying together, then you know you, you're, not, uh, you're not ready. But in our case, as you see, if we uh, squish the curd together, it's holding fairly well. And so now you've got two options. One, you can pour this, um, the curd off and drain the whey and you can press your cheese. And that'll give you a, a moisture version of cheddar. Um, what we like to do is we like the characteristic squeak. So what we're going to proceed to is what's called the cheddaring process. 
but the next step is the same regardless. Um, so we'll pour this way off. And in order to do so, what we have is a, a sieve. And um, what we'll do is we'll put some cheesecloth uh, in this sieve, which we'll show you. And then we'll drain the curds uh, through there and into another stock pot. We've got some boiling water and we're gonna pour the boiling water all over uh, all aspects of the uh, sieve and the cheesecloth. Uh, one, for sterilization, and two, we don't wanna shock the curd when we're bringing it from the pot and pouring it into um, the uh, uh, sieve. So we're gonna take our uh, sieve and we're gonna put it into the uh, stock pot. We've got two identical stock pots uh, for cheese making. And so now what we'll do is we'll take the stock pot that we had on the stove and we're gonna pour it into um, the cheesecloth and drain out all the way. And so this recipe uh, is meant to make about a kilogram of cheese, uh, given the fat content of our raw milk and our lovely cow Freya, uh, we seem to get uh, 1.6, 1.7 kilograms of cheese. So at this stage, what we'll do is um, we're gonna continue uh, with the cheddaring process. However, at this point, you can press this. Again, it'll be a more moist version of cheese. It won't have the same uh, squeak, the characteristic squeak that you get from a cheddar and the cheese curds that you're used to buying from the store. So for the cheddaring process, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna take about a third of the, the whey that you have left over, put it back into your stock pot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this up for an hour. Um, but you, depending upon how uh, your cheese is, there's certain times of the year where we won't go as long with the cheddaring process because it dries the curd out. Uh, we'll put that back on into our double boiler. We'll get our lid and what you want to do is you set your timer for an hour. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set our temperature for the lowest possible setting because we don't want to we don't want to cook anything anymore. We're just going to uh, heat this and keep it warm. And then also what we're going to do is every 20 minutes we're going to invert the slab. Okay, so uh, at the 40 minute mark we're going to flip the slab over, and then at the 20 minute mark we're going to flip it over again. Again, if you don't want to cheddar and you want a, a more moist uh, version of the cheese, you can press this right now. Okay, so we've cut the curd into um, chunks. Uh, you can do it with a French fry press. Um, that works very well. But we didn't find that our, our cheese pressed as well, so we do it in more cubes. Um, but Typically, you'll see uh, the curd cut into um, long, skinny, french fry-like uh, structures. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add one tablespoon of salt, and we're using a uh, kosher salt, a coarse salt, uh, for this application. You can use like a Himalayan salt, but not just generalized uh, iodized salt that you get from the grocery store. You want something, you know, that's a better quality. And so it's one tablespoon per kilogram of cheese and you just mix it around. Um, this is one of the only cheeses that actually uses um, salt in this process. Generally, we use a brine. Um, and so our cheese, like I mentioned before, was about 1.7 uh, kilograms. So we're gonna add a little bit of extra salt and we're gonna mix it in um, and then we'll press it. And generally, if uh, we got some stragglers that, that leave, we pretty well eat them. So you mix it around, get it nice and mixed. The salt adds to the aging process. So you need salt in your cheese. So don't, uh, there's a particular ratio that is recommended. Um, and so again, that's one kilogram for uh, one tablespoon of salt. So if your cheese, make sure you kind of get an idea of what the yield is. If you've got more than a kilogram of cheese, make sure you add the appropriate amount of salt. We like to keep aside some curd. Uh, you can eat the fresh curd, um, make some poutine or whatever you wanna use your fresh curd for, just for snacking.
Now we're gonna use the cheesecloth um, and we're gonna add the curd to the press. So again, we're using the same cheesecloth that we used throughout the process. And we just add the curd directly to our press. And we're gonna press it for about an hour. Okay, so once you've got all your curd uh, into your press, so you wanna fold your cheesecloth over the curd and pull at the same time so that it doesn't bunch at the bottom because you want a nice uh, looking wheel. Make sure you have a place where you can drain the whey. Well, we've got a cookie drying rack and then we've got a glass nine by 13 pan. And then from there we put our uh, cover on and then in this place we've got a screw that's gonna go through and push the cheese down. And we're gonna get uh, this wooden portion flush with the top of it. And we're also going to elevate it. It drips back into our nine by 13 pan. So the reason why we uh, also elevate it is we don't want the way to collect on the surfaces here. We want it to get it away from the surface, drain into the pan, the glass pan is not going to uh, be affected by the moisture, but our uh, press will. So we don't want any whey collecting on uh, the top portion here, or we don't want any whey collecting on our surface. So not no whey collecting in here, so we'll have to pour it out into our glass pan, and we don't want whey collecting on this surface because it's gonna ruin your surface uh, over time. And so we want basically to a point where we have firm pressure and we have a little bit of whey dripping out. And this is the first stage and we'll leave it like this for about an hour and then we'll redress the cheese. Um, so essentially that what that means is we're gonna take the cheese out of the, uh, the cheese cloth and we're going to flip it and then redo what we just did. We redress the cheese with the same techniques that we did to originally dress the cheese. We put it on an angle and then we wait for the drips. We want a consistent, steady drip from the whey. It doesn't need to be flowing at this point, but it does need to be a consistent, steady drip. That's how you know you have the right pressure. You will continue each time you walk by to add a little bit of pressure if it can take it. Um, usually we let this sit overnight so that it'll be ready for us the next day. And here we are the next day, and we can take it out of the press. Sometimes it's a little hard to get out. Now you can see the cheese is fully one piece. We will put it on the shelf to dry for about two to three days. You wanna be flipping it at least twice a day. There's some Havarti there beside it and some Monterey Jack, Parmesan, another Monterey Jack, and then these ones are Gouda here at the top. And you can see they're at various stages of drying with or without wax on them. So they take the cheesecloth, we're gonna rinse it out fully as much as we can. And then after we rinse the cheesecloth out, we add it to a pot, I had some other ones, and then we're going to add some vinegar to this pot. This is how we sterilize them. And then this is going to go onto the stove and we're going to boil it. We boil it for a period of time and then we take it out and we air dry them. Next up, we're gonna wax coat the cheese. It's a cream wax coating, it's a mold inhibitor. We cover the cheese, it'll get two layers drying between the layers. You just see, it, it actually kind of just looks like glue when you put it on. After waxing the cheese, we then go ahead and we get the food saver out and we vacuum seal the cheese. Each cheese is individually vacuum sealed and then any pertinent information is written on the top of the cheese. Then the cheese is taken to our fridge and it is flipped regularly within the fridge. This is how we store our cheese long term. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you next time. Good afternoon and welcome to Connerty Meadows Farm. This is Tecon Ironside coming at you strong. <laughs> <laughs> This one is great. And what we call the poutine. We put <laughs> this with some gravy and some french fries and we get a hot attack. Oh.
Oh, just like that. That's how your blood moves through your veins. It is the art attack. But wonderful when it's going down. 